friends. So let's talk more about Jupiter retrograde today. It has been stationing um, exact yesterday. That energy is very much in the air today, day before yesterday, day before that, yesterday, today, tomorrow. These days are all marked by a type of break being hit. It's a hard break in terms of what we've been hoping for, what we've been looking forward to, belief, optimism, expectation. So we have a chance to reassess, to reevaluate, and to come to an understanding of what might be more true for us and what might fit us better in terms of our hopes and our dreams and the vision for our life. So there is a deflation or a hard break or a bubble that's popped or had a great deal of air drawn out of it at the retrograde stations. And so we can be in a bit of a slump in terms of what we feel we can hope for, what we have to look forward to. What were some of our expectations that we thought would materialize or the kind of growth that we had assumed would occur for us in our life? There's a pause when it comes to those things so that we can reconsider the rate of growth and sometimes even if it's something that we want to continue to breathe life into is it a dream that's actually appropriate for us now because sometimes when we have something in our mind, a hope, a dream, a fantasy, a plan, and we go towards it, we may not realize that over the course of time that we've pursued that thing or wanted that thing, craved that thing, looked forward to that thing, had our focus on that thing, while we've been focused on that thing, there's been parts of us that have grown apart from it or have outgrown it. Maybe we're not completely on board anymore. That's what we really study over the retrograde period and particularly at these days of the stationary retrograde. This is where Actively, the air is drawn out of our balloon. And we can go from hero to zero very, very quickly. So we can have a lot of inflation. We can have a lot of hope, energy. And then uh, two minutes later, it's all drawn down to nothing. And we're in this place of feeling extremely tired, extremely um, sad for some, extremely deflated. For some, it can be a physical symptom only. For some, it can be an emotional symptom. For some, it's a mental symptom because our bigger, more all-encompassing thoughts or ideas, they can reduce to a trickle. So there's a um, reconsideration 
of what's in our cup. Jupiter is our cup half full. During the retrograde period, it does, the level does come down a bit, just a bit. It's not, it's not half empty. Like if Saturn was in the mix. But it's not as abundant as what we were used to. So that puts us in this position where we look at how does that abundance come back? How do we feel full again? How do we regain our optimism? How do we breathe life into the vision for our life? sometimes we lose hope. We may have to adjust the trajectory of our dreams. Sometimes we have to enlarge in the scope of that dream. There's also another side to this retrograde period in that we can have a hard, hard reevaluation of the types of cultural stories, religious stories, family culture stories, political stories that bring us a sense of comfort, camaraderie, connection that explain the world to us in such a way that it gives us something to believe in. We have Jupiter in Gemini, which is the natural balance to where Jupiter typically lives in Sagittarius, lives and rules. Girls, come to mommy. That's just the first time you'll probably hear that. So Jupiter becomes concerned with the facts of things. What's true? What is the basis of a good argument? What sources in daily life, in news, in trends and current events, what sources are we consulting and considering? So we're looking at the small parts, the news we consume, the facts we consume, who we invite into our daily life, who we converse with, who we consult and follow on a daily basis, and how that becomes the precursor to the belief systems of Jupiter that we see in Sagittarius, where Jupiter naturally resides. So looking at, um, do I believe in what I consult? Do I believe in the variety of the sources of the information or people that I look to 
to tell me what something is. So we can make these small adjustments as Jupiter is going through Gemini, these small adjustments in how we think, the sources that we consult, the facts that we assume are right or wrong, the people that we go to for advice, those who we communicate with, in our daily life, on a friendship level, those who we look to to tell us the truth. There's a reevaluation of whether or not those people are giving us the best, highest version, the truest version, or a true version of all, at all. Of what's going on. Of what's what. So there's a reclaiming of our minds. A reclaiming of our belief systems and where we place our optimism. And is it warranted? This is a big thing here. Is what we believe in and hope for justified and warranted? Or do we want to believe it because it's comforting? Because it explains things in such a way that we can understand it. It doesn't allow for that pesky death anxiety of Pluto or the eighth house that Jupiter is a consequence of. So we have a crisis of faith. particularly surrounding these retrograde days, we can chicken the hell out. We can chicken out when it comes to taking a leap of faith that we know is going to lead to growth and stories that lead us outside of the current frame of our horizon. That's what we look to with Jupiter. We look towards the horizon and we look towards that mountain that Saturn represents, that follows Jupiter on the natural wheel. We look towards that mountain. This is the inspiration to start the climb. Because it takes vision. It takes inspiration. It takes excitement to have us looking toward something that is going to require effort and energy. Saturn is the climb. But Jupiter, he's the wind in our sails that gets us there to take those first steps of maturity. Many of us we will mature out of our childish hopes and dreams. 
over this course, the course of this retrograde period, because we also have Saturn going through Pisces at the same time and cutting through illusion and delusion and grounding what is truly sacred, what is truly unified, what is holy, what is whole. Saturn is grounding new realizations surrounding belief, spirituality, visions for a new culture, for a new world, new stories that we tell each other. New stories of hope, connectivity, inclusion, abundance, a fruitful future. New Jupiter stories. Saturn is helping to bring a hard wake-up call in Pisces to what has to die. It must come to an end so that we can have the kind of fruitfulness and abundance that we really deserve. So Jupiter's the cycle within that cycle of Saturn that is bringing some necessary skepticism to the sources of comfort, information, advice that we seek. So that we can have a bigger, broader connected, hopeful future. But we do have to go through a process of reevaluation, reconsideration, deflation as we go through this period of time here during the retrograde period. It does pull us back regarding what was we thought was full steam ahead. And in that pause, we can think really carefully about whether or not We want another ticket on that train. Maybe it was a blessing that it stopped at a station before the one we thought we were destined for or wanted to get to. In Gemini, our curiosity is It's at a high point. This is where we have the collective confidence to say, you know what? I didn't think I'd be dropped off here. But this looks pretty darn interesting. There's a bunch of things here that I had never considered. There's opportunities here at this stop. Look at the stores that are here. Look at the people. Look at the scenery. Hmm. Look at all of these new opportunities. This might have been a blessing. 
I think my train may have arrived at the right station. A stationary retrograde. <laughs> It'll uh, punctuate that point. <laughs> so, over the course of the next months, we get smarter regarding what it is that is justified and looking forward to. Hope is a beautiful thing. It's built into us for a reason. But if we're hoping for something, that ultimately isn't good for us. It ultimately, in the end, isn't going to bring us the kind of dream and vision that we wanted for our life. It's best that the train stops here. Because what is meant for us cannot be stopped. What's good for us What's true that cannot be prevented by us accepting what is, accepting the moment, accepting that this is the station that we're at. And that there are good things here. And we are going to enjoy all those good things. Make space for all those good things. Explore all those good things. And if the divine creator sends another train in divine timing... Well, we always have the option to get on that train. But this is our time to enjoy what is. It's always our time to enjoy what is. And if the moment brings something else that is, well, that'll be fun, but it ain't here now. So relax, reconsider. Reassess and enjoy where you are at right now because it's where you are supposed to be.